Welcome everyone to another special bonus episode of the Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, to a new Found Footage Fool. Uh, so we've got kind of a special one here uh, in that we are talking about not one but two movies, although really just one movie, but we're going to talk about the second one anyway on account of it being the sequel. Uh, the movie, the main movie in question, is The Gallows, uh, a found footage film from 2015. Uh, this was at a time when... Uh, people would throw a bunch of money, or at least a little money, at a found footage movie and release it wide in the theaters. You don't see that so much anymore. Even that uh, Paranormal Activity Next of Kin was straight to a streaming service. That could be on account of COVID, uh, but, you know, these days a found footage movie is not necessarily a big draw uh, by virtue of the style of film. Although there was the heady days, you know, following... Uh, you know, uh, like Cloverfield and, and that kind of thing, where all of a sudden, and you know, Paranormal Activity, the original Paranormal Activity, of course, where there was a race to get these movies into the theater, and there were a lot of those clones that had, you know, at least a, a moderate budget, a substantial enough budget to pull off all the gags. Uh, and I think that The Gallows is kind of on the back end of all that. Like I said, it's about seven years old at this point. And it is uh, certainly in the supernatural vein, the, hey, we're in a haunted place kind of thing uh, with uh, with that found footage subgenre or sub-subgenre. And uh, written and directed by uh, Chris Loafing and Travis Kloof, Kloof uh, who would go on to do The Gallows 2, which we will touch on briefly, uh, only because it is not really a found footage movie, but it, it's worth talking about at least a little bit and so the basic story is that you've got um some kids who are putting on a production of a play entitled the gallows and through a series of accidents or just really an accident not a series of uh the main actor or one of the actors on stage uh is actually hung and so 20 years after this tragedy a group of drama students at this high school where the this hanging happened, this accidental hanging happened, have decided that they're going to put on the play again, which seems in poor taste at best. But sure enough, they are going to, you know, restage the this production of The Gallows. And uh, one of the the kids is a football player who kind of wants to blow off uh, being the lead in this play and his buddy who is a hooligan says hey I've got a great idea let's break into the school after dark and we'll just destroy the stage you don't want to be in this play we'll destroy all the props and everything and then they can't stage the play I, I guess believing that no <laughs> nobody would just tape everything back together but that's the plan and so they do they bust in they break some pots and knock over some stuff and then supernatural things uh start happening namely um invisible ropes and sometimes very real ropes uh appear from nowhere and start choking them so that is the gallows uh the long and short of it now before we get into whether this movie is good or bad uh we always like to apply science right like this is not just some fly-by-night show that just willy-nilly will subjectively say that a movie is bad or the, a movie is good. No, 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 no. We've got a series of five criteria that we are going to apply to this movie to determine objectively, without the uh, shadow of a doubt, whether or not this is a good found footage movie. And so let us begin with our list of five criteria. Number one on that list is keeping the cameras on. It, does the movie give a good reason for why all of this is being filmed and no it does not there is a, a great uh, it, it's one of those movies where somebody just has the mini cam and you needed more 
of somebody saying, hey, we're using this camera for light or something. But in a lot of cases, it's just assumed that they're filming it on account of they're filming it. And no real dialogue is given to why. And there are, you know, as with a lot of these movies, there are extreme circumstances happening where you would naturally say, to hell with this camera, I just need to survive, and tugging along this camera isn't helping in that cause. Uh, So, yeah, keeping the camera on, you know, we do these things on a scale of one to five. I'm going to give it, like, a two, because uh, initially, sure, there's plenty of reason to be filming, but after shenanigans begin there is no reason to continue uh filming but so uh, uh, two out of five there um characters here i think it fares a little bit better uh if not perfect um i think there is something to be said for this you know football character football player character who is sort of pining for the lead girl in the play a girl named fiverr and he's torn between two worlds sort of thing between his his football bro buddies and wanting to be a part of this theater crowd and despite his nervousness like he seems to have at least a little bit of a moral compass uh whereas his pal uh ryan has no such uh moral compass and is just the tasmanian devil let loose in this high school up to and including the point where he's just tossing a football at the nerds' heads and whatnot. Um, and then along for the ride is, is I don't know if, if she's his girlfriend or just she's the cheerleader who's kind of tagging along for sh- these uh, doings uh, is uh, a girl named Cassidy as played by Cassidy Gifford. All of the uh, characters, all of the actors are using their real name or their, their real first name a- as part of this, but uh yeah so cassidy is just sort of there to wantonly destroy along with ryan um as they're doing this pfeiffer busts in and becomes part of this quartet that is under siege by uh the ghost uh of this kid that that was hung years ago but aside from that very superficial sort of description that i i just gave There's not a lot of depth. I mean, Reese has the most depth, for sure, but that's sort of it. And most of the movie is these kids just running around screaming, so not a lot of room for the characters to to develop or or tell you who they are and what they want and all that stuff. The stuff you do with characters in movies. So, again, probably about a 2 out of 5 for the characters. Um, authenticity is the stuff that you're seeing believable. Um, I think the effects work is pretty good. The acting, I would say, still feels like acting, so it doesn't have that raw kind of Blair Witch vibe where it's like, oh, these are just real people. This feels like a movie. And so the authenticity is going to rank a little bit lower, probably a three out of five. Um, not because it's, it's necessarily bad. And I, I think the actors are not awful in this, but you know, when you're doing a scripted found footage movie, the actors tend to say scripted things. The one thing I will say, and this is a a, a bit of trivia that I found that I really like is that when they captured the opening shot of the movie and the opening shot of the movie is this tragic hanging that took place 20 years ago. And the thing that kind of blew my mind is that the directors did not tell the cast that this kid was about to get hung. I mean, they had him in a harness and rig. Like, nobody really got hung for this movie, (laughs) which would be really authentic. But instead, they just didn't tell the cast. It's kind of like what they did in Alien, right? Where, you know, Ridley Scott didn't really tell the cast what was going to happen with uh, John heard in the scene and that the alien was going to bust out of his chest. And so when this kid drops, you can see kind of real panic and the kids on stage are confused and aren't sure what's going on and what to do. And so that part of it, I think was definitely authentic, but then everything past that again, just it feels very much like a movie. It feels like you're watching a movie 
the movie doesn't go out of its way to remind you of that fact, like some movies do, that kind of dip in their toes into the waters of the meta. But, yeah, it doesn't come across as being very real. Uh, which is, again, kind of a slight when you're talking about a found footage movie. You want their... The whole reason to do it is that it has this air of authenticity, right? So, um, little, little bit of a faltering there, um, but not terrible. And then you get to watchability. And this movie is not great, but coming off of something like the dark web tapes and a lot of the really low budget, super indie, uh, kind of movies... The watchability is still probably going to land about a 4 out of 5 for me. That's high. I understand that because the movie itself is kind of dull. And like I said, a lot of it is just kids running around screaming. The camera moving around. Every now and again you get a glimpse of this hangman's ghost. Uh, But I will say that it ends in a way that I thought was, if not genuinely creepy, at least has that vibe. Like it... It ends pretty well, and it starts pretty well, and everything in between is all right. So I think that on a watchability scale, like I said, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. That's really grading on a curve of having seen a lot of stuff that's just impossible to keep your eyes focused on it. Um, But then we come to scares, and and with scares, I got to go like a 1 out of 5. It's not very scary. Um, it is mostly the camera whipping around. Occasionally you see something when somebody drops the camera, you see something there, but I think this movie was PG 13. Uh, and, and as such, it doesn't really ever go for it at any point. Um, so it just feels kind of lackluster. Um, it's mostly kind of dull, the characters aren't great. Like I said, it doesn't feel very authentic. Um, and so ultimately, with it not being very scary, and, and to kind of spoil the ending, because there's no reason for you to really watch this movie, but skip ahead for a minute if you don't want to hear what the end of The Gallows is. But uh, it turns out that uh, the girlfriend of the dude who got hung um, has uh, been kind of observing some of this and the way that Pfeiffer survives the one survivor of the movie is that she finishes the play with this ghost, uh, on stage and, uh, Reese ends up being sort of a sacrifice of sorts where he goes through the motions and gets hung. And the end of the movie is a SWAT team busting in to find, Uh, or a couple of cops busting in to find Reese and this girlfriend at the girlfriend's house, I think, uh, watching a VHS tape of the play, and the cops end up getting hung by nooses that drop mysteriously from the ceiling while this girlfriend kind of brushes the hair of Pfeiffer in a really creepy, culty way, and they both have dark circles under their eyes and look all jacked up and whatnot. And that's kind of an interesting scene. I kind of wish the movie had, you know, that, that was the midpoint of the movie, and then something else happened. Um, so, ultimately, on a, on a scale of 1 to 5, The Gallows is going to land somewhere around a 2. Uh, I can't really recommend it, but given the found footage stuff that we cover on this show, it certainly ain't the worst. Um, it's not a great entry, but it's at least a little more polished than some of the stuff that I've been watching lately. And that's kind of what I was in the mood for. I needed something that looked like an honest to goodness movie. Um, which brings us to the gallows Two. So the gallows Two is not in fact a found footage movie, although it kind of starts that way. Um, and it, it expands the lore in the sense that there is this thing called the Charlie challenge, where you read the gallows uh, around a bunch of candles and then weird shit happens, supernatural stuff happens. And there's a, a young girl who is moving in with her sister, going to a new high school that has a very prestigious drama program. And it's just a big blended mess of stuff where she's trying to become a YouTube star or something and is doing the Charlie challenge and has invoked the name of Charlie and therefore seems to be somewhat possessed by Charlie and 
Meanwhile, she's got a boyfriend whose actor parents seem to be part of some cult where they are trying to elicit a perfect performance, a.k.a. sacrifice out of Charlie for unknown reasons. And it, it the like where the gallows is a lackluster found footage movie. The gallows two it, or act two, you know, let's get fancy with it. The gallows act two is a mess. It, that is a movie that don't make no sense. Uh, it's, poorly directed the the performances aren't great it's it is substantially worse i think than the gallows uh and the gallows ain't that good to begin with um so if you the the one thing that it does is it becomes like a real movie it it mostly ditches the found footage stuff so that it, it can tell this larger story but in telling that larger story and expanding the lore it just gets confused and and muddy and it's really, really unfortunate as a movie. It, it does not hang together even a little bit well. And yes, that pun is intended. Um, so anyway, that is going to do it for this time on uh, Found Footage Full, a twofer in which we talk about the gallows and a, a brief bit about the gallows too. Um, we will continue to do more found footage nonsense because I cannot stop, uh, much like Pringles. Once you open the can and have one found footage movie, you gotta have a whole fistful. And so we will continue this journey through the world of found footage cinema. I hope you are enjoying it. Please, as always, um, you know, share the show around, rate the and review the show where you can. That certainly helps with uh, with the profile. And most of all, I just really appreciate you guys listening and commenting. And you can do so on Twitter at Dark Parade Pod, or you can do so on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade and if that don't work for you drop me a line and uh you can reach me at bo bo at legion uh where this show is hosted among many many other great shows uh so check out that website and you can find not just this stuff but lots of other creators and uh, i encourage you to do that as well so that will do it for this episode of found footage full thank you as always We will see you next time on The Dark Parade.